Olá, aprendizes da vida, bem-vindos a mais uma edição do Injeção na Testa. Hoje uma edição especial, estou com meu amigo Herman Lee e nós vamos conversar algumas coisas aqui a respeito do mercado musical, guitarra e coisas curiosas a respeito da vida de um músico, né? Going. Great, nice yeah, to have you. So nice to have to be here with you, and I have so many curiosities to be, speak about with you, especially because I know that um, you're a musician, but also manage your own band, right? I'm actually going through the same thing. I don't. Mm -hmm. My band Angra doesn't have a manager anymore. I'm kind of feeling that responsibility. Mm -hmm. To myself like planning focusing the idea of this channel is bringing the kids information so so they can plan themselves they can mm -hmm. they can be a little bit more aware of what uh what do a guitar player need to know besides playing the guitar <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so tell me a guitar hero helped a lot Dragon Force, right? I mean, it was a good thing. It was a good. Do you think that still impacts on on your music or on your career? Um, the whole Guitar Hero thing, of course, it was a surprise for us. Yeah, we never asked to be on it. It was a fan's request, writing on the forum of Guitar Hero's forum, to say, "Gotta put Dragon Force on number th Guitar Hero three. And I played the first two, so I knew what game that was about. And um, so we gave them the song. And that was it. We didn't even know where it's going to be in the game. So we only found out later, oh, it's the last song after you finish the game. So it was obviously, you know, it put something on us, right? Because at that point in the international scene of music or metal, guitar solo is still a relatively uncool thing on the main street. Of course, yeah. Anger is still shredding all these years, you know, making great albums, lots of guitar playing. But in terms of mainstream, It was kind of like, oh, you know, it was like metal core, it was that kind of music. It, yeah. was, a, it was a very important thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Guitar Hero brought back the spirit of guitar playing. Because like very young kids, they could feel that they were playing the guitar. And I think Dragon Force brought, brought the spirit of shredding as a fun thing, mm -hmm. as, a, as like, um, like, like a game. It was you can Negative. play at home with your friend, your friends, yeah. your family, kids. It works for everybody, right? The music, and and bringing rock, rock music, guitar music back in a different way. You know, there's like Eric Johnson. There's different kind of music in there, and at that time, you know, the scene was all new. You know, not new metal, but you know, metal core, more heavy stuff. There wasn't really much guitar solos. So, even though, to be honest, when Guitar Hero came out, we already did Ozfest, and we did. Three headlining tour in America. Nice. So it was like kind of like it all came at the right time. The band was growing really Good. fast. We were on Roadrunner Records, and Roadrunner is very influential in a scene in America. Cool. You know, they have all the bands, right? Slipknot, you name it, Killswitch Engage. So they right. were able to market Dragon Force to a different audience that, you know, noise records would do. A diff like Nuclear Blast, a different kind of approach in America. And that, you know, and that whole thing, you know, the whole thing that exploded along with Guitar Hero. So it was, it was crazy. And This time you were living in London? Yes, I was still living in London at that time. By the time Guitar Hero came out, we already stopped touring America. We we're just finishing off in Europe. So right. it, it, it just kind of went crazy. You know, the album sales was like really picked up. So it was, it was a really good thing for us and for... I think for guitar music generally. It was. It, I mean, I have a friend, he's, he's an awesome guitar player, he's mm -hmm. still young. And he started out uh, on Guitar Hero, learning and like, I think that Dragon Force, your style of playing, impacted on many musicians that came afterwards. The Guitar Hero, the fact that Dragon Force was there, was like a turning point for, for the guitar techniques and for the young generation. Yeah, I, I think we, we have some kind of role playing In, yeah, in this, I, I do. Um, About the managing thing, I mean, when was the time that you decided that you should lead, you know, uh, on, on like planning and 
being in charge of most of the responsibility is in the band? Well, so to bring back to the beginning of the band, I used to manage the band up right. until 2006, until the release of that song. Okay. At that point, when that, when that album came out, it's just not possible for me. It was just too much work. And, you know, I was just learning on the spot, yeah, reading books, reading what's on the internet, trying to, you know, understand how the music business works. You know, I did the record deal. I went and found the record deals. I contacted all the different record labels. And then I got a lawyer to help me understand the deal and signed it. Do you have a crew, like a team of people helping you out, like secretary? What's your structure? No, no team. Just me. I did the website. I did the, you know, making the website, did all the MySpace stuff, the mp3.com, um, arranged who to record the album with. Uh, I learned Pro Tools on the spot for wow. making the first album. And then, you know, and then there was a gap. We got a manager. By then, you know, when we got the manager, the band already exploded. I pretty much built it up um, that way. And then since, of, um, you know, a year and a half ago, we, we you know, we taken in charge again of the situation. I realized it was the only way to, to move forward. And it's better to know that every decision you make, if something happens, it unfolds. Yeah. You know, and there's no questions about things. So with, with managers, I think one thing very important that musicians, especially rock musicians, and musicians can get really bullied, I think. All kinds of musicians, because we want to concentrate on the music. And somehow a lot of people out there can sometimes bully you because you don't you're spending more time on being a musician than you don't spend your time in the business. So you, there's no way that you can know both equally yeah, well, yeah? Yeah, I know what you mean. I was learning on the fly. I wasn't doing the amazing job at knowing everything, but I was trying my best. And we got our deals and all that. There's things I could have changed if I knew when I was younger, but I didn't. And even now, a year and a half later, I wish I did something better. And we're always learning. Right. So I think people shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. I've always had people in charge of my uh, interests, right? Now I'm not afraid anymore to, to commit mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now it's on my own responsibility. There is the personal life that you have to schedule. Mm -hmm. Right? How do you do you balance your personal life? Well, so this time around, I do have assistants. You know, okay. Sam, yeah, known for his drinking, helps out a lot behind the scenes with That's a lot of the daily stuff that you know. It's like decision is if you have to pay a bill, you have to pay a bill. Okay. It's not like you can't think about it. Well, should I be paying the bill? No. But if it's a deal coming in, then you could, sometimes you got a question: Are these correct? Okay. Should I speak to a lawyer? Should I speak to someone to help me? So I do mainly a lot of these these things as well. There's like there's no there's no right or wrong, um, but um, but you gotta think about it. Um, so Sam help you with daily stuff and in house with lawyer too. So I have this uh, office of lawyers helping me with so many stuff, especially mm -hmm. because the, the after almost thirty years of mess. You know, because mm -hmm. I mean, so many ex-members, you know, and so Oh, many. yeah, it's very complicated, you know. Because after you learn the mistakes, you still need to, to, to deal with the mistakes that were done, mm -hmm. you know, and they're still uh, coming back to you many times. That's, that's how I feel. So I'm trying to clean up a little bit of the stuff that was done in the past. I, I, feel, the, I, I feel the same too, you know, a lot of the stuff that needs cleaning up from the past that hasn't de been dealt with correctly or just not dealt with at all, just like left in the... And they go, oh, okay, that hasn't been dealt with. Young people need to understand, if they're going to get managers, they need to understand that the manager works for you. Managers think they are the boss and then musicians be, do what they're told. Yeah. Okay, maybe they're more experienced in certain things that they can tell us and guide us. So it's up to you and your trust, but always ask for an opinion for someone else to see what's happening um, yeah. on that. Young guys, I mean, young musicians or... Uh, young bands, many times they get so desperate to find a manager that whenever they find one or someone puts some interest in them, they do whatever he wants. I mean, he, he can manipulate the band because of that the picture that the manager will be responsible for all the good results, which is not the, the truth. Mm -hmm. About your routine, you know, you, you are very mood task kind of guy. What is your routine like? And you have your personal life, of course, mm -hmm. young baby, you have the, your Twitch TV, 
how do you manage your routine like from Monday to do you have any kind of <laughs> so I'll tell you what what happens in Hermandy's life okay. Monday to Friday Monday to Friday every day I wake up I do the so from sleeping the night before I look after the baby okay if the baby wakes up I make a decision if she need to be fed or she gotta go back to sleep by herself all right yeah and then I wake up in the morning feed the baby do the stuff needs to be done take the baby to daycare I take the dog suit because the dog, this dog can't be left alone. He starts freaking out. And he's fully blind. Yeah, so I take him in the car too. Everyone just go, drop the baby off, come back here. First thing, check email, reply to necessary email, try to do all of them. By the time I you know, do the email, it's almost time to do a live stream. All so right. I do the live stream, I finish, and I try to do some more. You do it every day? I do it three times a week when I'm off tour. Okay. When I'm on tour, we stream every day from the shows. Ah, okay. Yeah, so oh. people can see backstage and on stage nice. what's happening. You have someone helping you with this? Or no. You're like holding your iPhone on? <laughs> no. I'm my own crew. Yeah. On my own stream tech. Okay. It's the industry, That's brave. The industry, industry hasn't got to the point where we, and the band, you know, to afford to bring a stream tech. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, so you're fortunate that you were able to, I mean, to really do it. So my background is IT computers okay. before being a professional musician. Okay. So it's the yeah, it's the very yeah. I know it's a difficult thing, it's very complex, the cameras, all the streaming stuff. So I'm always you know researching about it. But that's my daily thing and then I try to do work and try to put the guitars in and then you know by the time it's four o'clock I gotta pick up the baby. I leave the weekend free. Oh yeah from, from working when nice. possible. Good. Yeah. But do you practice your guitar during the weekend? No. 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 Okay. So I have to find that practice somewhere. So I do it on stream. Okay. I practice driving for songs on stream so people can see me doing playthrough. Nice. Like all the time that set this. I can practice this song. Sometimes I mess up, but you know, that's the reality of it, right? You know. That's nice to know. That's nice. Many times I get a little bit not, not so confident to practice in front of people. I wasn't at the beginning and I would say, oh no, I don't want people to see this. But after a while you thought, you know what? You either believe the reality or not. Yeah. This is what it is in people. People perform better one day and worse another day. Yeah. You don't practice, you're worse. You come back off tour, you're shredding, your fingers are like on fire. Um, so we try to, I try to put this across just like what you're doing, you're giving the fans information um, you know, on your YouTube now about the business and I'm trying to give that other side of my view, what happens in that. So it's actually been really challenging to do the management and then doing the streams and doing the band, being a musician, having a child. <laughs> this makes it really been a difficult time, but you know, the band has been really growing right now. I feel like we're, we're in a position now, which is even better than when Guitar Hero, just, bef you know, just yeah, before Guitar nice. Hero came out. So, you know, the musicians go up and down, right? Scenes go up and down. We have highs and we have lows. And we're really back on another high. I think we had some lows when we changed singers. You know, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's a big change here that people can't I mean, accept. Changing singer is a big thing, right? We've, ch we've done it two times. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the third mm -hmm. singer uh, lineup. Because, yeah. I, mean, I could say that the singer represents the different lineup more than the drummer. It was difficult. I think, you know, the, our lowest selling tour was when we changed singer. Was it? The reality, yeah. Apart from Japan, actually, um, Europe was okay. The US made a, made, a, made a bigger difference. But now we kind of turn around again. We made the same amount of album with our new singer, or our, not our new singer, but our second singer, Mark, as the first singer, Zippy. Okay. Sa they made the same amount of album. So we're back at the same point. Okay. You're like, you're rebuilding something. It doesn't yeah. matter. Someone needs to, it's some kind of rebuilding point. With us, it's not, not everyone can do a Nightwish. Nightwish able to change singers very successfully. They did, yeah. Yeah. Our enemy. Yeah. It's so, awesome. I mean, good on them. Yeah. But, um, it wasn't the case it, for us. Yeah, for us too, I mean, it's always hard. Going out on tour. I see that many guitar, young guitar players nowadays, they have a career on their own home. They perform uh, to their cameras and uh, on social media and they get very famous. But going out on tour, facing uh, the crowd every night and like, actually performing uh, you don't get the chance to 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 redo it yeah right and the life on the road it, 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 is a, it is a little bit of stress for some people i don't know if you want to talk about it but uh 
Steve T worked with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I heard there was this issue with anxiety, mm -hmm. which is also an issue for me because I'm also a very anxiety and mm -hmm. anxious person. And I heard, I read that you were the guy who supported him and helped him out with this. It's tough to be on the road. We actually talked about this a little bit with Kiko when I saw him last time. And it's, it's a kind of different thing. Kiko is telling me, you know, these YouTube guys able to do these videos. They can't play live. They don't go and play live. But I play live, but I can't make these videos. Yeah. You know, and I have to learn how to do these videos. It's like if, uh, if our um, the guitar player's career is split into different, different branches. Yeah. yeah. And everything is a skill. So those guys that do videos on YouTube, they have very good in playing in front of the camera. Myself, before streaming, I'm scared of the camera. I'm okay. uneven, I feel like some, I just cannot perform. You know, even though something I played a hundred, you know, every night for like four years, 10 years, I'm still like, ah, you know, there's a feeling that's kind of get to you, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm able to challenge that by doing live streaming. I feel better now and playing it, I just don't care. Like, you know, there's mistakes, be it, if it's, but this is, this is what it is. And so the YouTube guys, I know they, They're, special, they're specialists in making YouTube videos. They're really good at it, yeah. making good takes, making entertainment video, and they just haven't practiced playing live, and it takes time to practice live, to be Because good at live. Stand with yeah. your guitar. Stand there. How many guitar players are playing standing? You oh, didn't okay. sleep, you didn't get a good meal, you can't hear yourself too well, the lights are flashing, there's people distracting you. Asking for pics. Yeah, pics. you worry about something before the show, you didn't quite get to the zone, you didn't have a good sleep on the bus. So many factors, right? Instead, yeah. you, you get your best case scenario on YouTube, right? Everything you're in control. So this is something I think the, the people that do videos should experience, even if they don't want to be a professional live musician. It's part of living. Yeah. It's good to get out of the bedroom. And with Stevie, you know, he talked about it and he's a very talented player. He's yeah. a great guitar player. That's why we asked him. You know, he's a funny guy. I like his video content. You come in, you know, just come on tour, hang out, play the show. He couldn't, he made a video explaining, you know, his anxiety and he couldn't handle it. It was a really big pressure because I, to be honest, it's kind of my fault. I didn't really think about it. I thought, oh, I'll just come and play TwitchCon, do the tour. I didn't realize because I didn't come from that background. I played the show after playing guitar so for six months. Thing, yeah, yeah. To, to play. And I forgot, there was 1.6 million viewers for the TwitchCon thing, right? Unique viewers that watch that show. Okay. That's, the, that's the first show I asked him to play. Oh, right. Obviously, that's gonna. I didn't even think about the pressure. So he got really the pressure really got to him, and I said, "Look, the only way to beat this anxiety problem is do the tour. Come and do it. If you don't want to do the tour, just come on the tour just to hang out, be with us. Nice. Come and play the triangle for fun. Come and just do a little solo in the middle of a song, just to get out of the house. Because I know a lot of YouTube stuff. People are just stuck in their house. They're yeah, trapped." Yeah, yeah to make video content because they have to make how much minutes and how much video per, you know, period in order to go up in the rankings, right, to be seen. So they're playing that game, like social it's media. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. They, they have their game. They, they, have, pressure, yeah. Yeah. they have a lot of pressure as a YouTube guy. It's not like I just make video, I'm famous, ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. And in order to earn their income too. And then YouTube also changed the system and they will let less money. So they are under the pressure. It's just like us with selling records and then with YouTube. In the channel and if YouTube is gone what they're gonna do they don't have a channel beyond that so um, so I respect the guys who are big Instagram YouTube people and I'm always happy to talk to any of these guys if they if I can help them in the music industry I think we should help each other the, um, the all generation YouTube players live players small yeah. bands we should all get together always talk about it and help each other out we're not asking them money we're not asking for percentage We're not asking to manage you guys. We just want to help and yeah. let's help each other. Yeah, and I think we can also learn from them because I mean, these guys, they, they showed them a whole new world for the guitar professional, mm -hmm. you know, for guitar players to expand. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that guitar survives. Exactly. You and know? they force us to evolve at the same time. All the time. You asked me just recently what inspires me nowadays. Whenever I see like these young players coming up with new techniques, not that I will try myself to, to learn those because I think it's 
it's a whole different universe. But it's so nice to, to, to know that guitar is evolving that much and it's still fascinating young guys you mm -hmm. know, to, to challenge them to learn the instrument. And yeah, I like it. I like it. But one thing we know, right, from experiences, you know, the skills of the guitar is unlimited. They can do things we can't do because yeah. we don't practice that stuff. But they also don't have the time to practice what we do, playing live and all that. Yeah. So, um, so I think you know it's great that we can educate each other, learn from each other, all yeah. generations, uh, and they gotta understand their worth. You know, someone with how many thousand subscribers, they need to know that gonna play a brand of guitar. For example, you're doing free advertising for yeah. a brand. These brands no longer have to buy ads on magazines. You know, they should be paying you if you have a big YouTube channel to play certain guitars uh, yeah, right. for how many how many videos, how many brands. If you've got a million subscribers, the reach you're getting 500,000 videos and um, views on the videos, how much it costs the brand to put an ad in a guitar magazine? And they're still, still not getting that views because it's not interactive. It's, you don't get how a comment. How many copies of the, the magazine yes, <laughs> are out and the views are comparing yeah. to the views? Yeah. Worldwide, and this stays forever. The magazine, yeah, thrown away in the toilet, you know. <laughs> you someone sit down and look at it, and if you once you stand up, put your pants up, probably not worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I think you know, young guys out there, know know what you're doing. Don't feel like oh, you're just lucky to get a guitar. You guys practice for years that art of skills and be proud of it and make it happen. There is one question. It's not a question actually. It's um, reflection. Mm -hmm. So just. Because I'm bringing to other uh, people that I'm interviewing. Our music, your music, our music. Do we do it? Is it more about yourself or more, or more about the people who you're delivering it to? I would say writing music should be a selfish thing, all about ourselves, nothing else. Because you're creating something you love, right? And if you create something that you think someone else is going to like it, they don't like it, you don't like it, you just wasted all this time making something, right, that you don't care about. Yeah. Uh, so I think if we do something that we like, we're truly expressing what we like into the art form. Once you start thinking, oh, am I, are we going to sell any more of this? You know, there could be some interference. Of course, it's the music business. There's always going to be some kind of thought into it. And someone else who take a percentage of what you make, <laughs> might also inject their opinion to know to say they know better. But the truth is, no one really know what works. You know, have you ever made a, another album? You thought, well, it's as good as the, the other one, but someone said this one is a million times better, or that one is a million times better. Yeah, okay. It doesn't make any sense. There's no logical explanation. It's not mathematics, right, yeah. or physics. So I think, in our opinion, in my opinion, Dragon Force, we make music that we want to hear because I think I know, after listening to so much music, what I want to hear in my ear and what's original and that's show what we are. Nice, nice. Well, it was very nice talking to you. Thanks for having me here on your place. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your answers, for your mind. I believe that young, young guitar players that are watching us now, they, they they really like, they will enjoy it and it's useful information for them. Thank you. So, thank you, Rafael. Thank you, my Thanks friend. for having me. Awesome. É isso aí. Se você gostou, dá um like, compartilha, aperta o sininho e esse foi mais um Injeção na Testa especial com Harmony. Valeu. Obrigado. Obrigado.